so students we are coming now to the second part which is the infections and discussing about the chronic osteomyelitis the etiology of the chronic osteomyelitis is inappropriately treated acute osteomyelitis firstly secondly the inadequate surgical debridement if it's not done properly in immunocompromised host like a patients who have got cancers nutritional disorders especially in diabetic patients peripheral vascular disorders and who are intravenous drug users pathology of the uh, chronic osteomyelitis is the necrotic bone is walled off by a periosteal new bone which is known as the sequel involucrum and the fibrous tissue and secondly is the sequestrum formation that is the dead bone surrounded by the granulation tissue the essence of chronic osteomyelitis are these two terminologies sequestrum and involucrum we'll see in the diagrammatic picture of chronic osteomyelitis this is the knee joint and this is the skin the subcutaneous tissue and this is the intramedullary region this is where the osteomyelitis is there and see that there is sequestrum which is the dead bone which is formed this is the sinus or sinus tract which goes from the intramedullary region towards the subcutaneous and the skin this infection also tracks in two three ways firstly it can go in the medullary canal secondly it can track down passing through the medullary going to the subcutaneous and go into the joint or it can go through the subcutaneous and skin and making a sinus tract so these are the regions where this infection can easily spread secondly uh, the involucrum which has been mentioned is the new bone which is forming around the sequestrum so you can see that the uh, sclerosed area is the sequestrum and new bone formation occurs around that so this is a very essential part of the chronic osteomyelitis that is the involucrum which is new bone formation and sequestrum which is the dead bone which is surrounded by granulation tissue and sinus tract is always a essential component of chronic osteomyelitis it must be kept in mind for the mcqs also coming to pathology of the chronic osteomyelitis the bacterial road within the pathological site is one uh, reason the second is the involved skin and soft tissues the sinus tract with the dead bony spicules the important part of chronic osteomyelitis are these bony spicules which are very characteristics of this a disease and chronic osteomyelitis which is not seen in the acute form intermittent episodes of acute exacerbations may come in between the chronic episodes the signs and symptoms are there is constant pain there is intermittent fever irregular swellings are there definitely there is presence of the sinus tract and there is sometimes history of discharging bony spicules from the tract the patient usually tells that or if it's a child the parents of the child usually tell that to the doctor in the signs on palpation the whole surface becomes very irregular bony structure there is tenderness also on the affected area this is a image of the a leg a young boy who has tibia has been has a compound wound and you can see how this whole region is been infected and the bone also is kind of exposed with the soft tissue coming to the x-rays and investigations the x-rays usually are very very characteristics of this disease it shows a thickening of the bone the whole bone becomes irregular and thickened and there is sclerosis which is present irregularity is always seen the sequestra is very dense there is radio opacity which is which is surrounded by a zone of lucency also there are a lot of cavities and radio lucent tracts which are formed which are the sinus tracts which are going across and going to the soft tissue and the skin there are a lot of cavities which are known as cloacae also which are formed and there is reactive periosteal new bone formation so in the form of which are seen classically in the chronic osteomyelitis 
This is an X-ray picture. Both the sides, a lot of sclerosis is seen in the diaphyseal region. There are some cavities which are clearly seen at these three regions. The area of lucency. You can see the bone is quite irregular and there is also deformed and is quite thickened at the margins. On the right side, the X-ray imaging also classically shows the sequestra, which is the radio dense area, which is the sequestrum, which is seen with the arrow pointing. And this is a classical case of chronic osteomyelitis. Other investigations which we can do is the culture for isolation of the pus which is draining from there for knowing the organisms which is causing this osteomyelitis and for also knowing the sensitivity of the organisms to the antibiotics. The other things which can be done are the bone scans, CT scan and MRI which can further help in your diagnosis. Coming to treatment, uh, which are the organisms, the sensitivity, you have to give the appropriate uh, antibiotics in the form of intravenous, injectables as well as oral antibiotics are given. Secondly, the operative is the only modality for this specially. You have to do a sequestrectomy that is you have to remove the sequestrum by the word ectomy is to remove so sequestrum has to be removed and just like a cup and saucer the procedure is saucerization so you have to make a flat surface into a cup like structure that is called saucerization and radical debridement of the infected area the newer techniques are like hyperboric oxygen therapy also has been started obliteration of the dead space is very very important because if the infection remains and there is a nidus which uh, still remains, the infection can still persist. So you have to be very careful not to keep any dead space. Now how to prevent and uh, not allow this dead space to remain? It can be filled with one is cancellous bone grafting of the, from the uh, uh, patient itself. Secondly, you can also put the antibiotic impregnated bone cement. Bone cement is like our cement which is mixed with some kind of antibiotics especially known as polymethyl methacrylate which is the cement and lastly you can do a myodesis that is surrounding muscles or around that joint can be also used to cover the dead space. So these are three common methods where you can fill and obliterate the dead space. This was a young child who had a onic osteomyelitis of the lower end of the tibia and see the image on the left side. Following which there was uh, the sinus which can be seen and the sinus tract which was excised completely and this is total sequestrectomy which was done and so that it can give you have to do a radical and adequate debridement so that the infection cannot persist and it will not recur. There are sequelae and complications to chronic osteomyelitis also. There could be acute exacerbations. Secondly, there could be pathological fractures following this angular deformity, the whole fracture may not unite in the right anatomical method. There could be sometimes metastatic abscesses. The joint above and below could have joint stiffness that is the ankle or knee suppose it's in the tibia. Scarring of the skin, the whole skin gets puckered. Limb length discrepancy is very very common. Squamous cell carcinoma of the sinus tract and amyloidosis are rare but also one of the complications. I mean to some special types of osteomyelitis must know about the chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis of Garay. Diaphysis followed by metaphysis is involved in these cases. Anaerobic uh, causative are the organisms. Low virulence organisms are there and good host resistance with good immunity is always seen in these patients. So it doesn't persist for long but this you must remember that this is one of the types of osteomyelitis. Chronic recurrent multifocal osteomyelitis is also seen in young adults and children. Usually the etiology is not known. Low grade fever is seen in these cases. Swelling and pain in the affected bone and concomitant postulosis, uh, palmar plantaris or acne may also be present. In some special situations like diabetic foot and diabetic patients, they could be due to peripheral neuropathy and repeated trauma to the insensitive area. Vascular insufficiency could be also caused over there and extensive debridement is needed in such cases. Osteomyelitis and other special situations like intravenous drug abusers 
the pseudomonas aeruginosa is one of the commonest organism so this also can come in one of the mcqs so you must pay attention that intravenous drug users the pseudomonas is the commonest organism sickle cell disease is in that there is recurrent attacks of bone infection seen vascular insufficiency and bone infarcts occur in this case and 10 times more susceptible to salmonella osteomyelitis so this also can come in a form of mcq where you must remember that sickle cell disease you must know that it is associated with salmonella you can remember it as s in this form of sickle and s for salmonella syphilitic osteomyelitis is also there which can be congenital or acquired in salmonella osteomyelitis a few points about it is it is common because of s typhi the common in seen in sickle cell disease always followed by enteric fever and there are multiple sites of infection not only in one region it is uh, affecting many joints maybe it's also in the spine and lower limb also pseudomonas is also another organism which can cause uh, osteomyelitis classical of the uh, discharge of pseudomonas is green in color so you must know that pseudomonas and green go hand in hand brucella is another one which commonly affects the spine and it is commonly seen in meat handlers so this also you could see that the organism which is affecting spine and associated with meat handlers could come as a mcq question anaerobic osteomyelitis in the form of bacteroids and anaerobic streptococci are also there actinomyces infection this is classically seen also known as jaw osteomyelitis seen in the mandible so you have to remember this also it is commonly associated with the mandible and fungal osteomyelitis that is again actinomycosis affecting the hand and the neck parasitic osteomyelitis in the form of echinococcus that is the organism and viral osteomyelitis varicella it is caused usually by smallpox finally the tuberculous osteomyelitis that is having multiple bone involvement is one of the commonest diseases in our country it should not be forgotten and if it's swollen and fusiform seen in spina ventosa in this the phalanges are very commonly involved thank you very much